Good day everyone. Welcome to Jiggy Maths. So for today we have a new topic or new unit and this is about sequences or patterns. And we will begin with arithmetic sequence. Now let me give you first some common examples of sequences or patterns and one of those is square numbers. Why are they called square numbers? Okay so let's uh, uh, present this in a geometrical way, okay? So we begin with one and then followed by four circles there because the, those four make up a square, all right? And then the third figure has nine circles because as you notice, this is a three by three square. So we have a total of nine circles. So we have one as the first number in the sequence or that is the first square number, followed by 4, and followed by 9. And then we will have uh, a 4 by 4, and that gives us 16. The next is 5 by 5, that is uh, consisting of five, uh, 25 circles. Okay, so as you can see, these are the square numbers. So that's why these numbers can also be written as 1 square, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared, and then 25 is 5 squared. So those are the square numbers. So if you have recognized the pattern, what do you think is the next number in the sequence? You're right, that is 6 squared, which is equal to 36. Another common example of sequence is what we call as Fibonacci sequence. This sequence begins with 0 and then followed by 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and 34. We know that there's a rule that satisfies the sequence. And what do you think is that rule? And what do you think is the next number in the sequence? And that is 55. So 55 is from 21 plus 34. So do you think the rule is like this, wherein you have to add the two previous terms? Okay, for example, 34. 34 is from the sum of 13 and 21. Let's try another one. 2 is from 1 plus 1, and 5 is from 2 plus 3. So that is the rule of the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, sequence in general, or another term for that is progression, is an ordered set of numbers that satisfy a rule. So there must be a rule that satisfies all of the numbers in that sequence. Let's take a look at this example. 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. In this sequence of numbers, they satisfy a rule. And what do you think is the rule behind this? So if we have 3, plus 3, that will give you 6. 6 plus 6 gives you 12. 12 plus 12 gives you 24. And 24 gives you 48. So that is the rule. So if you add the number to itself, then you will get the next number in the sequence. Right? What about this one? 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. What do you think is the rule? And by the way, the rule has to be consistent for all of the numbers. There must be only one rule um, that governs the numbers in the sequence. So 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So I will have, I can have 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 square is 4, 2 cube is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So that is the rule, 2 to the power of a number. So which means the next number in the sequence is 2 to the power of 6, and that is 64, right? Okay, what about this one? 6, 11, 16, 21, and 26. So from 6, which is your first number, so 6 plus 5, 11, plus 5 again, that is 16, plus 5 gives you 21, 21 plus 5, and that's equal to 26. So that is the rule, Ad adding by 5, right? That is the rule for this 
sequence. And the numbers in the sequence are called terms of the sequence. So for instance, 3 is the first term of this sequence. 8 is the third term of this sequence. And lastly, we have 26 as the fifth term of this sequence. Now we have two special sequences that we will be discussing more thoroughly and the first one of those is arithmetic sequence and what is the sequence? A sequence where each term differs from the term before by a constant. So a term differs from the term before by a constant. What does it mean? If we have this example 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24 uh, is this the term minus the term before that must be a constant. So for example, 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. What does it mean when we say constant? So we have to try another, uh, another set of two numbers or another two consecutive numbers. Let's try 12 and then minus the, the term before that and that is 8. So 12 minus 8 is equal to 4. Let's try another one. 16 minus the term before that, which is 12, is also equal to 4. That's what we meant by constant. The difference must be the same for all those two consecutive numbers. So 4, 4, 4. It didn't change. So we have what we call a constant difference or a common difference, which means the sequence that we have is an arithmetic sequence. What about the second one? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. So if we want to try, if we want to know if the sequence is arithmetic, so let's do the same thing. We have to get the difference between the term and the term before it. So let's have 4 minus 2 equals 2. And then the other one is 8 minus 4 equals 4. So as you can see, the difference here is 2. And then the other one, the difference is 4. So it changed. It's not constant. It's no longer constant, which means this sequence is not an arithmetic sequence. So in general, a1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, up to a sub n, be an arithmetic sequence. It follows that a sub 2 minus the term before that, which is a sub 1, must be equal to a sub 3 minus a sub 2, must be equal to a sub 4 minus a sub 3. Okay? And that is equal to d. And that is our common difference. All right, so this is the way for you to test if the sequence is arithmetic. Now, it also follows that, okay, so in this sequence, if this is an arithmetic sequence, it follows that a sub 2 is actually equal to a sub 1 plus the common difference, right? And it also follows that a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2 plus the common difference, okay? But take note that a sub 2 is actually a sub 1 plus d. So a sub 1 plus d plus d will give us a sub 1 plus 2d. So a sub 3, which is the third term, is equal to the first term plus twice the common difference. Now let's try a sub 4. a sub 4 is a sub 3 plus the common difference d. But it follows that a sub 3 is a sub 1 plus 2d. So to simplify, a sub 1 plus 2d plus d will give us a sub 1 plus 3d. So as you can see, there's a pattern that's, that's going on here, right? So a sub 2 is a1 plus d. a sub 3 is a1 plus 2d. So the third term, we have the 2 here. a sub 4, this is 4, this is 3. So in general, we are going to come up now with a formula. a sub n is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times d. So that is our formula. Okay, a sub n stands for the nth term or the general term. 
a sub 1 is our first term, n is the number of terms, and d is the common difference. Now, take note that n must be a positive integer. Positive integer like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. Now, let's take a look at this example. Find the n term formula. We have to find the formula. So, given the sequence 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Okay. Now, for you to find the formula, you have to make sure that this is really an arithmetic sequence. Okay, let's find out. So we have to get the common difference. So 8 minus the term before that 3 is 5. What about the second one? The next pair of consecutive numbers. 13 minus 8 is also 5. 18 minus 13 is also 5. And then 23 minus 18 is also 5. So this is an arithmetic sequence and it gives us now the common difference which is 5. So let's find, let's use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we will have a sub 1 which is the first term and that is 3 plus n minus 1 times 5 which is our common difference. So simplify this and that will lead us to the formula. So a sub n equals 5n minus 2. So this is the n term formula or the general formula for this particular sequence. So having this formula, we can find now the 31st term and we can also find the a sub 50 or the 50th term. So let's try the 31st term. So a sub 31 is equal to 5 times 31 minus 2. So and that will give us 153. So 153 is the 31st term of this sequence. What about the 50th term? It is equal to 5 times 50 minus 2. So plug in 50, which is your value of n, and that gives you 248. That is the 50th term in this particular arithmetic sequence. All right. Now let's have another one. 5, negative 2, negative 9, negative 16, negative 23. As I said, try it first. Find out first if this sequence is arithmetic because we have so many sequences, right? Okay, so how to determine if this, if this is arithmetic? Let's find if the difference is constant. If the difference is common, then this is arithmetic. So again, it's negative 2 minus 5, all right? Negative 2 minus 5 gives you negative 7. What about negative 9 minus negative 2? That gives you negative 9 plus 2. That is also negative 7. Okay? Now, don't be assured that the differences will be common. So, let's try for another one. Negative 16 minus negative 9. That's also negative 7. Alright? So, this sequence is arithmetic. So, let's use again the formula. To find the nth term formula. So plug. Um, let's identify the first term which is um, 5 plus n minus 1. The common difference is negative 7. Simplify this. Get, uh, will give you negative 7n plus 12. So having this nth term formula you can find now any term in the sequence. Okay. Let's try. Find the hundredth term in the sequence. So n will be equal to 100. Plug that in, in in our general formula and then you will have negative 7 times 100 plus 12 and the 100 term is negative 688. All right. I would like to emphasize here again the common difference is for example the second term minus the first term. Not the first term minus the second term. All right. Okay, let's have another example, which is finding the number of terms. So how many terms are there in a sequence? If we have a finite sequence uh, in this arithmetic progression, just like negative 16, negative 13, negative 10, negative 7, and it, it ends at 59, how many terms are there in this sequence? So what is the position of 59 in this sequence? Okay. So you're right, we are looking for the value of n. Okay, 
So again, this is arithmetic that definitely there is a common difference. It is already assumed that this is an arithmetic progression, so meaning we don't need to prove or to show that this sequence is arithmetic. So negative 16 is a sub 1, which is the first term. And then the common difference is a sub 2 minus a sub 1, giving you d equals 3. All right? So uh, 59 is our a sub n. So let's use the formula. a sub n is 59. a sub 1 is negative 16. And then common difference is 3. So looking at this equation, this is an equation of one unknown. And the unknown is n. So we will have n equals 26. Okay, n equals 26. Now remember that n must be a positive integer. It doesn't make sense if n is equal to a decimal number. There's no such thing as 54.5 uh, term. All right, so n must be positive integer. Okay, cannot be negative as well, must be positive. All right, let's have an, uh, another example. Is the given term in a sequence? How would you know if the term is in the given sequence? So, for instance, the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence are negative 7, negative 11, negative 15, negative 19, and negative 23. So this is uh, already given to be an arithmetic sequence. Is negative 140 a term in the sequence? So how would we know that negative 140 belongs to the sequence? So uh, we can find the following information. We can determine the following information. The common difference is negative 11 minus negative 7, giving you negative 4. All right, And then the first term is negative 7. Okay, again, use the formula. Um, a sub n is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So, is negative 140 a term in the sequence? So, let's assume that it belongs in the sequence. So, that means our a sub n will be negative 140 equals first term negative 7 plus n minus 1 times negative 4. And that's your common difference. So, solving this equation, solving for n will give you negative 137 equals negative 4n, and n is equal to 34.25. Now, um, let's evaluate this answer. n being equal to 34.25. Does it make sense? Of course not, because n must be a positive integer. So therefore, we can conclude that negative 140 is not a term in the sequence. Okay, It doesn't belong in the sequence. Now, let's have another example, finding the first term and common difference. So, let's have this problem. The fifth term of an arithmetic progression is 4.4, and the ninth term is 7.6. Find the first term and the common difference. So, there are two information given here. The fifth term, okay, I'll be discussing this uh, using uh, two methods, okay? Let's begin with the first method. The fifth term is 4.4 so that means we can use this formula a sub 5 is equal to a1 plus 4d okay now a5 is 4.4 equals a1 plus 4d okay what about the other information the ninth term is 7.6 so we can use the formula again and that is a sub 9 is equal to a1 plus 8d so plugging the plugging in those values will give us 7.6 equals a1 plus 8d. So the question requires us to find the two unknowns, the first term, which is a sub 1, and the common difference d. So um, from the two given information, we came up with two equations. So if we have two equations, two unknowns, then the next thing to do is to solve the two equations simultaneously, right? So we have the first equation and the second equation. We can solve this by elimination using subtraction. So if we minus the two equations, we will get negative 3.2 equals negative 4d. And then solving for d, therefore d is equal to 0.8. And then from, from, from this additional information, we can now get a sub 1 using either of the two equations. Now let's use the first one, 4.4 equals a1 
plus 4 times 0 0.8, solving for A1, the first term is 1.2. All right? Now, what about the second method? What is the method 2? So, fifth term and the ninth term. So, we can lay down the terms like this. A5, A6, A7, A8, A9. All right? Now, we can assume that A5 is our A1. If we do that, then A1, A5 will be A1. It follows that A9 will be A5. All right? So, using this now, uh, A1 now is 4.4 and then A5 is 7.6. So, that means we only have one unknown and we don't need to solve the equation simultaneously. Right? So, A5 is equal to A1 plus 4D. So, from here, we can get 7.6 equals 4.4. 4.4, which we assume to be the first uh, term. Uh, A5 is 7.6. That's what we assume to be the fifth term. So solving this equation for D, it also gives us, it will also give us 0 0.8. All right? A sub 9 is equal to A1 plus 8D. So after we obtain the common difference, we go back to the original information. So, because we're now looking for the actual first term, okay? So, A9 is equal to A1 plus 8D. So, we can use this uh, equation, or we can also use the other equation, which is A5 equals A1 plus 4D. So, let's begin with this. A9 is 7.6 equals A1 plus 8 times 0 0.8. It will gi give us the same answer uh, 1.2 for the first term. If we are going to use this uh, other equation, a sub 5 is 4.4 equals a1 plus 4 times 0 0.8, we will also definitely get the same answer. Okay, now let's go to the last example, and that is how to insert terms in between. Let's take a look at this example. So insert six numbers between negative 1 and 34 so that all eight numbers are in arithmetic sequence. So we have eight terms in this sequence, a1 up to a sub 8. So, so since we need to insert six numbers between 1 and 8, so that means a sub 1 is negative 1 and then a sub 8 is 34, right? Okay, so uh, if this is now a sub 8, then we can use the formula. a sub 8 is equal to a sub 1 plus 7d. And then a sub 8 is 34, a sub 1 is negative 1 plus 7d. Then we can now solve for the value of d, which is equal to 5. So the common difference is 5. And from the definition of arithmetic sequence, so from negative 1, what we need to do to find the second term is just to add 5. And that will give us 4. And then third term will be 4 plus 5 equals 9. And then 9 plus 5 is 14, which is our fourth term. Fifth term is 19. And then sixth term is 19 plus uh, 5 is 24. Seventh term is 24 plus 5, which is 29. And, of course, our 8th term, which is correct, 29 plus 5 is 34. Therefore, the 6 terms are 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, and 29. Okay, so that is the end of the first topic of this unit. And the next one will be arithmetic series. But I suggest if you are confused with some of the examples, you can always go back and forth do the examples and then take a look at it again and then try to absorb most especially if this topic is unfamiliar to you all right so um thank you so much for questions and feedback please email me at jdtoday2014 at gmail.com